Hey everyone, it's Jeff from Programmers vs. World, and today we're starting a completely new series on Apache Sling. Now, to get this series started, we're going to need to learn how to, in how to basically install Apache Sling, and we're going to learn how to use the Apache Sling IDE tooling, at least a rough overview. We'll become very, we'll become much more intimate, I should say, as the uh, tutorials go along. Now, I've already kind of got it installed, but I'm at least going to go through the motions and show you how to do it, right? So the first thing, of course, you want to do is open up Eclipse. And while Eclipse is loading, I already have a desktop set. Let me create a new one. We'll call this Sling Tutorial. All right. So while that's loading, we'll also open up a browser and we'll go to uh, sling.apache.org. Now, there's a couple things we want to do. The first thing we want to do is go into the downloads part of Sling's Apache page and grab the Sling standalone application. We won't worry about these other guys too much. These are really for, this guy's really for production web application deployments. And this one down here is really in case you want to build it yourself. We don't really want to do all that. So just grab this launch pad jar and you can get that just by clicking on it and it'll go into your downloads directory. It's about 66 meg and it doesn't take long to grab. The next thing we want to do is go into, well, actually we may be able to get to it from right here. Yeah. If we look right underneath where we downloaded the Sling application from, we'll notice there's the Sling IDE tooling section and there's this link. Now they recommend that you actually take this link, copy the link address, come over into Eclipse, go help install new software. Computer is not behaving today, by the way. Lots of beach balls. And we'll add this in as a new update site. We'll call this Sling ID. I'll probably get a warning here that I've already added this one. No, I won't. And then what we want to do is come in here and just grab. You'll notice I don't have an option for just the Sling IDE tools. And the reason being is I've already kind of done this. Yeah, so I've already got it installed. So my only option is to install this other guy, the uh, Sling IDE Tools M2E based, but you'll be presented with an option up here that doesn't have the M2E at the end of it. That's the one that you want. Go ahead and grab that and install it. You'll get a new perspective, new project types, a whole bunch of tools, and then you can get started from there. So once you have it down, once you have Sling actually downloaded the standalone application, you don't have to wait too much longer. You can go ahead and start it. Up. Let me open up in a new shell here. And these procedures are, are almost exactly the same on Windows. You can open up a command prompt too. I put mine in my documents folder in a directory called projects, right? Whoops, sorry. I am even using Windows commands here because I use Windows at work. All right, so we'll see that we have the jar file that we downloaded right here in this directory. To run it, all you have to do is go Java minus jar, the name of the jar. You'll get a whole bunch of stuff spamming your screen and it may go for a little bit here. But this is the most important part. You'll notice that it started up an HTTP server on port 8080. So this is our core web server. If we go back and open up on a Chrome, I use Chrome for everything. It doesn't really matter. And we go to port 8080, we'll notice we have a splash screen now. So we have some sort of a web framework that's actually running for us right now. Uh, if you read the getting starting section, which is handy information, it can be a little vague. You'll notice though, it tells you what the admin password is for the sling installation you have. It's almost always admin admin. It has been for years. I haven't noticed that it's ever changed. If you want to, you can go ahead and log in as admin admin, just so that you can use some of the links on this page. It helps later too, when we're browsing nodes, because you're going to need to be logged in to see them. But for right now, let's go ahead and just put Chrome aside for just a second. Actually, let's minimize it so that it's not actually in the way. And let's go to Eclipse. Now there's a few things we're going to want to do. I always close the splash. Um, I don't necessarily care about the Midland tab. This is a fresh install. I don't care about this guy either. Um, that's kind of cool that there's a JCR properties thing there. Um, we're missing a window right now that we need to have up. So if you go to window, show view, uh, other, and find the server window, this is really what we need before we even get started. Once the server window comes up, you'll notice that it'll, it, you're, you may actually have this window already. You may have servers populated for stuff you're deploying. If that's the case, just add a new one. In our case, we don't even have anything. So we're going to click this link to add a new server. And in the pull down list, we're going to find the directory called Apache Sling. We're going to click on the Sling server and external server, which is what we want. 
uh, the local host is fine. And yeah, that's good. We're just going to say finish. Uh, we'll notice that I'm actually going to bring this over here. This is where I like to have it. So we'll notice that it actually created one for us. And right now it's actually stopped. Um, this stop and start that you'll notice inside here. No, I don't want to participate in that. This stop and start that you'll actually see inside of here is actually talking about the connection, the interconnection between Eclipse and the server, whether it's stopped or started. You'll also notice it says synchronized or synchronizing or republish, or it says other things. What it's really trying to describe to you is it needs to move things from the IDE into the Apache Sling uh, instance that you just started running. Uh, we don't currently have a project yet, but we can start this if we wanted to just to see it connect. And it'll say synchronized because it really has no uh, project data or content to actually send over there. But so let's go ahead and start a project now. I'll just make sure, you know, I can actually drag that guy over there because that's fine. Because I just installed this, I don't have it laid out the way I like it, and it's driving me crazy OCD wise. Um, okay, so let's start a new project. If we go into the projects now, we'll notice that Sling actually has a project type. This was something the Sling IDE tooling added for you. Um, if we click the next button, it'll ask us for a project name. We'll call this Sling Tutorial. Use the default location, that's fine. Well, we can add it. Uh, we want to use the option Add to Existing Server, right? And this is our guy right here. It's the same one we created. Um, there's some other options here. We can cr create a project completely offline and say Don't Deploy. Uh, we can actually run a server from inside Eclipse. Uh, I've done this before and I understand now why they don't really recommend it. It's because it gets a little crazy between uh, it's it's just unwieldy to actually have Eclipse managing it. Uh, Sling doesn't maintain much of an overhead when it's running on your machine anyway. And uh, I just find it's a lot easier to have an external installation of it running and connected to it. When it's actually inside Eclipse, it becomes a little bit... Um, unintuitive of how you're managing its state and whether it started or stopped, especially since this doesn't really mean start or, starting or stop the instance. It means starting or stop the connection, but I'm trailing off. Anyway, say add to existing server, use the location of the sling server at localhost, and you know, if the server's not started, start it. That's fine. Well, notice when we did that, I don't know if you were quick enough to see it. Uh, I'll go back and after and edit it for you. It actually jumped to publishing there for a minute and then jumped back to started. Um, what it actually did was it published it. So we're logged in as admin. We have some tools in here where we can actually browse um, the resource tree. And I'm going to use it for right now. But this will be the last time you probably ever see me use it because I really can't stand this tool. It's just personal preference. If you click uh, browse the resource tree by clicking here and uh, you, you come inside here, it'll show you the root level of your resource tree. Now, I understand why this tool was built uh, to help you figure out how these directories are laid out. But for some reason, visually, the way it all blurs together, it becomes really hard for me to pick out the keywords I need, like content and apps, <clears throat> which are two of the main things I, I'm looking for. And I don't really like this as much, and I'll show you why. So. The reason I showed you that is if we come in here now and we look in our JCR root folder, now JCR underscore root is going to seem like it's some big official thing. It's really not. It's just a naming caveat that a plugin called Vault uses when it's trying to describe everything underneath here I'm about to put in here refers to content. It's just a naming mechanism that's used. If you get involved later with uh, Adobe CQ5, CQ6 development, AEM type stuff, you're going to really get used to this stuff because Vault is the primary mechanism. It even uses internally for its own package management. So these terms are going to be really familiar to you. And this is why I kind of want to teach you these tutorials this way. Making a jump to CQ is not a big deal if you use um, Apache Sling in the way I'm going to show you. Now, the apps directory is important in, in Sling because it defines where the actual rendering files are. We'll get into this in a later tutorial when we actually create one. Just know that this is where the actual web, JSP, ESP, different types of files are that render content. The content directory is really the data directory, but you'll notice here we have content example and then it doesn't seem to be anything in the directory. If we come in here and go content example, 
we'll see that there's all this stuff in it. There's a title, a description, a whole bunch of other stuff. Where is it getting this from? Well, the answer is it's, you need to enable dot resources to be able to see what's going on. So if you hit this little, this little pull down arrow right here and go to filters, most people know where filters are, especially dealing with Git files and that type of stuff. And you wanna uncheck the dot uh, wildcard resources so that you can actually see these dot content XML files that exist in a directory. Now, basically these work as a dot content dot XML file sitting in a directory is really there to define what that node is in Apache Oak. Or I, I, you'll hear me say Jackrabbit. I mean it synonymously. It's just a habit I got to break. Um, these define what the node types are. I don't want to look at the design, but I like looking at it this way, right? So this content XML defines what this content folder is node is supposed to be. In this case, we can see that it actually is a folder. So it's just a coincidence that it's a folder in here, but a folder in here. But if we open up example, we'll notice it has one in it too. Now, in this case, even though this is a folder to us, this content XML says, no, 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 this is not a folder. This is an unstructured node in Apache Oak. This is actually a data node and it has three properties, title, JCR description, and sling resource type. Now, all three of these have namespace prefixes in them. If you don't know much about Jackrabbit or Apache Oak, uh, now's the time to go back and definitely find some tutorials online and just understand the basics of what nodes are and basically understand what unstructured data looks like. Sling is a data first development platform, meaning we're gonna go into the repository and create all these data nodes to store things that we need and we may create some samples in there and just like you would in a database where you would give it some sample data for you to develop on. We're gonna navigate directly to the data using a URI and then Sling is gonna figure out how to display that back to us using renderers and that's what the apps directory is for. So we literally put data in first, then go to that data in the browser and then the Sling shows us what how to, how, figures out how to display the data to us. That's completely backwards from the way most of us think. It's very important that you get comfortable to, with unstructured nodes because that is gonna be the primary way that you put data in. Now, the JCR prefix is telling you some special things that really pertain to Apache Jackrabbit or Oak. In this case, we've seen primary type before if you've done the tutorials. So what we know now is, this node is an unstructured data node. It just, it can have as many properties as it wants and as many children as it wants. And it's just there basically like a big JSON structure, uh, a little bit different, but just think of it as a big JSON structure that's gonna have a bunch of properties in it. This JCR title is just there in case it needs to make a naming decision as to what to call it in the URI, it'll use the title. And the description is just something to help you later from a node perspective, figure out what the hell this thing was when you come across it. But the most important ones are the ones that you see with the Sling namespace in front of them, because these are gonna define how this web application framework is gonna do something. In this case, this is very popular to see the resource type defined. And the reason for that is the directories that follow this are hints as to where the renderer is inside your application. In this, in this case, we said it's in a, some directory called example another directory called item, there's probably a JSP file in there that helps us figure out how to render this guy. And if we look in apps, an example, item, there it is. So what does this all mean? Well, <clears throat> we're gonna put data basically in Apache Open, in Apache Jackrabbit. We're gonna hint at where the stuff should go, and then we're gonna go in and we're gonna build different kinds of renderers. We can build JSPs, uh, ECMAScript. We can use all different kinds of things. We can even use XSLT in some cases, and we may do that in one of the tutorials because it's really underutilized in my opinion. Um, but this is the development flow of how we're gonna develop applications in Apache Sling. Is there a lot more to it? Yes and no. But for the most part, let's see this actually in action. Let's see it actually work. Now, one quick primer on Apache Sling, and I promise not to go long. I told myself I wouldn't go over 30 minutes with ScreenFlow, and hopefully I'm on target with that. Um, everything that's put into the JCR now is accessible using a URI up top. For instance, if we said, I want to go to content example, um, we'll also get this notice that uh, I can't actually go there. Ooh, sorry. 
that would be how I got to the example node, right? So we talk about renderers here in a second. <clears throat> if I go to the content example directory, which would be this guy right here, who is a node who's structured this way, um, I can then add an extension onto the end of it to give Sling a hint as to how I want that node rendered to me. In this case, I said JSON. JSON's the most common because it's the easier, it's easiest to visualize inside the browser. So we can see here that this is in fact the same node here. If I wanted to see it in its XML form, I could do it this way and I could probably see the exact same thing. Um, the difference is it's going to add some namespaces onto it. For instance, it's, it added Oak and a few other things. And if I wanted to see it like we would like to build an application, I could say HTML and I get this render of it. So you may ask, where did this come from? Well, the answer is right here. I'm sorry, I just installed Eclipse, by the way. So I don't actually have um, any web framework running that'll render JSPs right now, which I will fix in a moment. But this is essentially the file that's rendering what you just saw, okay? So it's a standard JSP file and includes its own tag library, which it declares define objects. And that's so it can actually grab the properties right out of that node, even though there is a better way to do this, guys. There is a cleaner way to do this. This is just the example. And this is just guaranteed to work no matter what happens using expressions. So basically what they did was they had H1, they grabbed the title, the paragraph, and they put the description in. So that's exactly what we're seeing here. If we change the core data, right, and we hit save, we'll notice that uh, the next time we refresh, this actually published so fast we didn't even see it. The next time we refresh, we should actually have the change here. So now we're looking at how we essentially develop an Apache Sling. We work on the data first, we define a renderer for it, and then once we get to this screen, we can experiment a little. That's pretty much it for now. In the next tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to put a scripts directory in, a CSS directory, and uh, we're gonna make Bootstrap work in it just so that we can get started on a base framework, and that's where it's gonna go from there. Uh, I'm gonna think of an application concept that we can actually do that'll make some sense for the JCR, but, um, yeah, that's it. You guys have a good one. I'm Jeff from Programmers vs. World, and I am out of here.